What's up guys, Manny from Motor Million and it's time to do the finishing touches on the Motor Million SP2. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I took this bike out for a ride on Two Wheel Convos, which is our new podcast where I take you guys out to a very cool location in Miami, show Miami around a little bit and we talk about motorcycles a little bit too. So if you guys haven't checked out those videos, go and check it out. But I rode it last time and I realized that we really need a manual steering damper. This is something that it's almost default on the Yamaha R1 and on the R1Ms. We always change them on an R1 and R1M because we know that steering feel can get much nicer, especially when you're pushing it around corners. But also sometimes it just lacks that feel that you want and these electronic dampers unfortunately don't do it. And on the Ducatis, it usually doesn't come up, but last time I rode it since I've been riding all these different bikes back to back, especially the Motor Million M1000WR, which has the Olin's damper, you could really feel it and you don't have to be pushing the bike that hard to realize that you need it. So we have it here. And also we're gonna do some dress up parts that I think we should be doing. It's very simple. It's our TWM oil filler cap and our timing inspection cover by Duca Bike that I think will match the theme of this bike really well. So this is our the Olin's black line damper. And I know some are gonna say it already has an Olin's damper, but it's not a mechanical damper, which makes all the difference. It has quite a few, I think it's 32 or 36 clicks of adjustment, which makes it soft or hard. And if you receive this and just opened it just like me, don't be alarmed. If you come close, you'll see that there's oil that's leaked around a little bit. Even this is the case when you get new forks, there's some spillage that happens in transport. Don't worry, this thing's not leaking, it's brand new. We'll wipe that off when we're done. It comes with its own hardware kit. It's very simple. I think it's just one or two of the bolts that gets replaced and it's a straight swap. And we're gonna get rid of the electronics too. This is our stock damper. And if I put it side by side, you'll see that it's the exact same thing other than the color, but also the adjustment knob. So this is electronically controlled. This is mechanically controlled by your hand doing this. That's the only difference. I think they're valved differently inside as well. So on a bike like this, when you take out the electronic damper, you're gonna get an error. We have a module that we use, it's in testing and it's in development. As of this video, it's not available. But I think some Kawasaki guys actually removed this module and put it aside and tuck it somewhere else. That way they don't get that error. But if you ever remove this, make sure you realize that all the oil in this is gonna empty out, so be warned about it. For people who have questions, hey, this is the SP2, it must come with the good stuff. But let's not forget the V4R comes with a mechanical damper, guys, and there's a reason for it. The V4R is a little more track-oriented, that's why it has the mechanical suspension and the mechanical damper. In this case, I don't think we're gonna go all that crazy to put mechanical suspension on this bike. I think the suspension is good enough for what we do and I'm, I'm sure it's not too bad on the track either, but this does a lot in terms of the steering field even on the street. So that's why we're going to go opt in with this mechanical damper. Before I put Loctite, what I did was I made sure to see if everything fits because sometimes things are not so straightforward since there are so many parts that are replaced on these bikes. I'm obviously gonna get this marker off. This is how they check if the bolts are tightened from the factory. They'll put a yellow line. I think uh, it's cool if you get the bike, but and then you get annoyed of them because when you start taking things off, these yellow lines mean nothing. So I'm just gonna clean this off, put some Loctite, get this back on the torque kit and then we'll replace those other two easy parts and it's gonna be done. So guys, the damper's on. If you guys saw the clip earlier, I did take the bike off the stand and moved it all the way right, all the way left. This is something you should always be doing if you mess with anything on your handlebars or anything that's steering related to make sure that you have clearance and nothing is binding. And finally, I did take a little bit of alcohol on my microfiber towel, cleaned up the residual oil as best as possible for now. And uh, that's it. So that steering damper is on. I think it looks pretty cool too. Other than I know it's gonna feel really good. Uh, I wasn't too sure because the theme of the bike, if you take a look, it's a lot of silver with carbon now before it was matte black. 
and uh, the damper was silver, but it's not like a machine silver or something. And now that I look at it, the triple, the top triple clamp of this bike is even popping more because there's no other silver things around other than our beautiful handlebars that we replaced. And if you guys know, the SP2s come with some really cool top triples that are numbered. It's the same style that's on the V4R, but this says Panigale V4 SP2 instead of V4R, and ours is number 306, one number away from being 305, which is the area code for Miami where we're based out of. But now that that's done, I'm gonna stop drooling and staring at it. I'm gonna go ahead and do those two little pieces that we have left on the bike. And then I think it's fair to say that this bike is finished at that point. Our next piece is the Duco Bike Timing Inspection Cover. This is completely an aesthetic piece, but it has a little bit of carbon here and it's machined black and machined silver. I think again, it goes with the theme of this bike. We're gonna replace it. It's just a straight swap. You want to oil this O-ring over here a little bit and then we'll do our oil filler cap and we'll step back and drool at the bike, take a look at it, admire its beauty and uh, we'll have more stuff coming soon but let's just do this. It's on. It looks a lot better than I expected. Let me clean up some of this, of this residual oil that we have on. That's why the O-ring is there because there's actually oil in your crankcase when you're riding. And we could take some of these marks off that was left from the factory on this. And it's beautiful. And let's just do the oil filler cap. It is very easy. And if you've ever tried to take the oil filler cap off one of these bikes, you know how hard it is actually to get this cap off because of where it is. But we did also do something that was off camera, guys. That made it a lot easier. I don't know if you could spot it. I'll give you a few seconds to take a look at the bike and see if you could spot what we did. No cheating, uh, you can't really cheat because there's no video on it, but it actually makes this oil filler cap a little more accessible. So you got three, two, one, that's it. So we actually did use our Motor Corsa integrated reservoir on this bike. We installed it off camera. It really, really makes it easier to access here because before there was a brake reservoir here that you can't really put your hand, hand in here because then it keeps hitting the reservoir, but now it's even more accessible. But there you go, this oil filler cap by TWM is on there too. It looks cool. It also comes with this little piece. So you track guys, it has this piece inside. We often get questioned on what this is. What they have it for is, you could actually take this bolt out and put this right over here like this, and it acts as a bracket where you could safety wire oil filler cap because I think it's not racing organizations, but I think track day organizations ask you to safety wire some of the components of your bike and uh, or they put some sort of a goop on your oil filler cap to make sure it doesn't come off. I think it's like something like a silicone, but this is for the safety wire if you wanted to know. But at this point, I think we could say that, it's fair to say that this bike is done. I think also we did one more thing that I just noticed right now off camera was this beautiful TWM front axle slider. Again, it's the black and red theme of the SP2 that we have. We haven't really showed those parts. Those parts are brand new. We're just test fitting it on the bike. But yeah, at this point, I think I, we could say that this beautiful machine is done. It's, uh, it's been a long journey and sometimes they kind of forget the whole thing because they're around us and we see it all the time and we think, wow, you know, are we done yet or is, should we do more? And if you guys watch some of our other builds, we never just grab parts and throw at it because there's a lot of process that goes on. And we'll discuss about that, I think, when we do the Panigale V4 SP2 story, the more than a million Panigale V4 SP2 story, where we tell you guys the real, the whole story behind this build and how it ended up like this, because there's a big thought process that goes on, so check out for that video. And also, we'll probably make one last video before we offer this bike for sale, is our signature walk around videos where we do our walk around. We take this bike, we go around it, we tell you all the parts that are on it, we try to remember all the parts that are on it. We often forget one or two parts, but that way everyone gets a really good look at it. We get a really good look at it. We get it out somewhere really, really cool outside where I think the sun will shine on this beast because this is full carbon, guys. Other than the tank that we didn't replace, the subframe is carbon, all the body panels are carbon. It's match to look like an SP2 out of the factory. It's technically not our style to do carbon fiber bikes, but we decided to go with it. But again, look out for that 
story video, the Motor Million Panigata V4 SP2 story. Look out for our walk around where you could see all the details of this bike and we'll show you all the parts that are on it in case you wanna get inspiration to do your own build or you just wanna know what's on this bike or if you wanna really replicate the bike completely, which it's been done before. But anyhow, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Until next time, guys, have a good one.